Alright, Shalom, Shalom. Kahalayim la Yahweh Bashim Yahshah, Bashim with Hakadosh. The bonus to the apostles and to the elders of great millstone. Much peace, love, and salutation to all the brothers from the work and truth and sincerity, and believing in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah and truth and sincerity. Shalom. This is the brother of the top back again through the spirit with another lesson. Uh, Lord willing, be edifying to the lambs and the sheep of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah. Um, as you can see on queued up on the screen, I have the buffalo shooting, which you know through the spirit, man, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. This is nothing new. You know, as long as we under the hand of these, <clears throat> as long as we under the hand of our enemies, things like this are going to continuously happen, man. You know, uh, this is uh, going back to that perpetual hatred that Esau has towards the Jacob, you know, uh, so called white supremacist. You know, um, I don't know the fucking motherfucker's name, you know, really don't give a shit. Um, but as you can see, the fruits of the, uh, you see the, uh, you see the hatred, man. It's, it's clear. It's okay for a so-called white man to go into a supermarket with nigga printed on his gun and just kill 10, so, 10 so-called jakes. You know, at the same time, the scripture says, whoever perished being innocent, book of Job. And at the same time, the Lord says, uh, he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. You know, so there's a balance to the situation. That's judgment from the Lord, but at the same time, the Lord don't, you know, gonna turn around and judge Esau for doing that to his people. And we already know it's gonna be some type of bullshit ass excuse or whatever. Cause, you know, we need deliverance out in the hands of these so called white people, man. And this is just another prime example on why we need Yahweh Shah. A lot of Jakes are gonna die, just like those 10, 10 Jakes, I believe. It was all 10 Jakes. They're gonna die. Why? Because they, they don't have Yahweh Shah. If they had Yahweh Shah, they wouldn't have been in that market, man. They wouldn't have been an example of, made out of, man. You know? They wouldn't have been on the other end of that barrel. Because the Lord would have caused them to not go to that supermarket, man. Or wherever they went. But as you can see, they don't have the hedge of protection of Yahweh Bashim al Shah, so that angel of death, you know, took them out. And we, we, you know, and every time I see things like this, man, it's the same old shit. Same shit, different take. Shit, sh same shit, different toilet, man. So, I just want to get a few precepts, you know, through the spirit, man. Lord will it be edifying. This is the book of Psalms 144. You know, I love this precept, verse 7. It says, send thine hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of the great waters. From the hand of this, from the hand of strange children, and right now that that hand is is, is of strange children is referring for you, referring to you Edomites, so-called white people, our, our main enemy. You can kill us. You can kill us, you know, and and you get arrested like it ain't nothing happened, man. You get arrested. You don't get shot down, which you're supposed to get shot down after you're going somewhere in Kenton and Jake's. But there's been many examples like this made before. You know, we ain't going to get true justice until, you know, Yahweh Shai returns, man. He's our, he's our governor, you know. He's our true judge. He's going to judge us. He's going to judge righteously. Uh, Psalms 144 and 7. Send thine hand from above and rid me. And deliver me out of the out of the great water. So we want the Lord to deliver us out of all the the situations and all the you know that we find ourselves in. You know, everything we want the Lord to deliver us out of anything that's not for our well-being. It says, "From the hand of of strange children, whose mouth speak is vanity, and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood." Now I went into that word falsehood before. Let's go to it again deception deceitfulness it says also a lie that with that which is false so everything about Esau 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 society is falsehood you know equality equality is a falsehood that's a lie because we're not equal and they under his constitution we're still three-fifths of a man we're not all we're not even all the way a man you know when when um if a Jake went into a supermarket and killed 10 Edomites, then it, the, the, the whole situation would, 
the whole situation would have been different. But it just shows you how the privileges that Esau have in this society. But guess what? They're, they're, they're slowly being stripped away from him, man. They're slowly being stripped away from him. So, you know, continue on. Continuing on. It says... It says, I was, I'm going to jump down, Shalaki, I'm going to jump down to the point, which is verse 11. It says, rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children. So we want Yahweh Bashmael Shah to deliver us out of the hand of these devils, man. Because this devil, he's totally against life and you can kill, you can clearly see it. Look what he, what, look what, look at the food, you know, look at the way to, the way of life in this society. Homosexuality is at an all-time high. If you ain't a homosexual in 22, they're going to look at you like something wrong with you. They make being a heterosexual male seem like it's a uh, it's a curse, you know? It's not cool to be a so-called straight man and love women, you know? But the, the, the ways of this world, the ways of Esau, the way of death, and that's why a lot of our people are going to die. You know, I'm not saying those 10 Jakes was innocent. Most likely they was fucking niggas. The scripture says whoever pairs being innocent and where, and where were the righteous cut off. So we know Jake ain't innocent. They deserve to get put to death. You know, and hey, the Lord is the one that put their ass to death. But the point being of this lesson, I, we want Yahweh Bashim al Shah to deliver us out of the hand of this Edomites, man. You know, we don't want to be under these devils anymore. Because we want to live in peace. We want to live in righteousness. And we can't do that in this goddamn world that is run by evil. Evil E. It's the book of uh, Psalms 144 and 11. Read me and deliver me from the hand of strange children. And that's what Yahweh is going to do when he returns. Which he's coming back very soon, man. You know, the signs of the times. There was an eclipse last night. You know? Letting you know that, hey, that's the sign of the times. It says, Whose mouth speaketh vanity... And their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. So the scriptures reiterated it. He said it again. This is a Psalm of David also. So we want Yahweh Bashim al to deliver us, man. We're ready for salvation. We're ready to live in the sight of the Lord. Because what? The scripture says what? We go into this all the time, man. John 10 and 10. The thief coming not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. So Yahweh came so we can have life, so we can live, not be, you know, dead at 17, 18, 19. You know, back in the old days, man, that was something that was very rare, man, because, you know, going back to the days of Noah, they lived hundreds of years. I believe the oldest person was like, lived like maybe a hundred, no, it's like 900, and I believe 60 some years old, if I'm not mistaken, you know, but the point being man he lived for almost a thousand years and that's guess what that's a day to the lord the lord cut our life band down to 125 but even after that there were still people some people living to be 200 300 you know what i'm saying but when you really look at that man that's not that's not no you're not living man 20 years we it may seem like a long time to us but it really it's really not a long time man compared to the men of old and how long they lived you know i believe noah was like 800 years old when he died man that's that's unheard of in this fucking society we don't even get a, a quarter of that man we might get a quarter of that but we don't get no more than that and it and, and, and everything has been changed since the old days anyways too man but who wants to live to be 900 years in this wicked ass fucking world, man. You gotta see wickedness for 900 years. Hell nah, man, you'll bug the fuck out. <laughs> this place will have you totally polluted, man. So it's all through the spirit that we don't live that fucking long. But you know, I was just doing a comparison, man. You know, Jake dying long, young as fuck, you know? We wanna live. Uh, John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. That's Esau, he's the thief. He comes to steal, he's he stole America, he killed, he killed the Native Americans, and destroyed, he destroyed nations, he destroyed people, he destroyed lands, because that's his MO, man, you know, that's his, uh, 
That's it. That's his. That's his mo. Yeah, it's mo. You know. That's what he does. He's the devil. That's what he cre he was created to do. It's embedded in him to do fucking wickedness. And very soon, Yahweh Shai is gonna come put us put an end to this shit. And we're wait we're patiently waiting for that. Um, it's another scripture. Oh yeah, um, Psalm seventeen. You know, we go into the same scriptures each and every week, man. Psalm seventeen and thirteen. Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul. From the wicked, the wicked is Esau. Esau eat him. It says, "Which is thy sword?" He's the sword of Yahweh. He's the sword of the Lord, man. When the Lord wants to execute vengeance, I mean, so like execute judgment upon His people, He He uh, used the heathen to punish us. This is the book of uh, Isaiah ten and five. It says, "O oh, Assyria, the rod of mine anger." And the staff in their hand is my indignation. So Esau, so-called Esau Edom, the so-called white man, is the modern day Assyrians. And the reason why they come down so hard upon our people is because that's the anger of the Lord upon his people. The Lord uses the heathen to 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 um to uh, execute judgment upon us, man. But at the and then at the same time, the Lord turn, can turn around. And judge those nations for doing the things that they do to us. Why? Because he's the Lord. He can do whatever the hell he want to do. You know? It says, uh, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 6 says, I will send him against a hypocritical nation. And against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil, to take the prey. And to tread them down like the mire in the streets. And that's what the Lord usually, that's what the Lord has done to our people. He sent the, he send the enemies, he sent the enemies to us. And they spoil, they take, they, they prey upon us. They put us in captivity. They destroy our temple. They do things like that against our people. And to this day, Esau is still doing those things, man. He's still putting up, putting hell upon us. So, the same thing that you do to us, man, we're gonna do to you. And that's what Yahweh Shai is gonna give us, man. Galatians 6 and 7, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So Esau has sown nothing but what? Evil. He's sown nothing but evil in the world. So guess what's going to be his reward? Evil. You reap what you sow. Your works are evil. So guess what? Your fruit is good. The fruit of your works are going to be evil. And Yahweh Shah is coming to give it to you, man. You so called white people, now you're not going to escape. You're not going to get away. You're going to have to pay for all of your sins. Um, let's go somewhere. I ain't went in a minute. Book of Isaiah chapter 14. Um, let's see. Uh, this is the book of Isaiah chapter 14. We'll start at verse 3. It said, It shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So that time hasn't came yet. This is a future prophecy. The Lord is going to give us rest from all our sorrow, all our hardship, all our tears that we cry, you know, all the pain, you know, all the heartaches, headaches, body aches, back pains, cancer. Uh, AIDS, herpes, uh, uh, chlamydia, uh, heart disease, diabetes, gonorrhea, diarrhea, if I haven't said it already. Um, all of the things, all of the diseases and things that we suffer in this society, in this world, all the pain, all the suffering. 
All of this going to be put to rest because we're going to rest with Yahweh by Shema Shah, man. We're going to rest in the Lord after this place is over with. We're going to have new bodies. We're going to be in a, a good case. And this is why we go out on the highways and we risk our lives to believe and to push these words and believe in his work because we believe that the Lord is going to do the things that he has said he's going to do. And we believe it cold heartedly. We ain't got nothing else to hold on to this society. You know? We ain't got nothing else. So this is Isaiah chapter 14 verse 3. And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and, thy, and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. That thou should have taken up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? That gold city, golden city ceased. Now that oppressor, the king of Babylon, is Esau, as of right now, because America is Babylon the Great, and Esau is the king of Babylon. You know, which the word Babylon comes from the Hebrew word Babal, which means confusion. And if you, you can clearly see that this is a place of uh, great confusion. You know, men want to be women. Women want to be men. That's just, you know, the beginning of it. That's just scratching the surface, man. You know, got all kinds of religions in this society. You can worship whatever the hell you want to worship. And it's nothing but fucking confusion. It's the book of Isaiah 14 and um, 4. No, 5. It says, Yahweh has broken the staff of the wicked and the scripture of the rulers. Now, a scripture is something that a ruler is supposed to have. Let's look up that word, scripture. Did I spell it right? No, it's actually. I think it's the same thing. It says, um, from 13th centuries, scripture, from old French scripture, kept scripture. From Latin, scriptrum, which means a royal staff. From Greek, scriptrum, staff to lean on. Royal scepter. In trans use, transferred use, royalty. From root of scripturin to prop or stand or stay, lean on. So it says, in the imperial authority symbolized by a scripture. So you can clearly see that Esau is an authority. Esau is clearly an authority. So yeah, basically they say the same thing. Okay, let's go back to the book of script, uh, some script. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 5. It says, Yahweh hath broken the staff for the wicked and the scripture of the rule of and the scripture of the ruler. So the Lord has broken down this devil's rulership. You know? His royalty, his riches, his society. The Lord is breaking all of that down. Because he's it was established upon wickedness. And Yahweh Shah is coming to put an end to all of that. Verse 6, it says. He who smote the people in, in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindered. So Esau is the one that keeps smiting. He never stops smiting. You know, ever since these devils came into power, there's been no end of wars. This is the same, one of the same reasons why Rome fell. Never ending wars. Look at America's existence. America has been in war ever since it's been established. It's been war at the war at the war at the war. These devils got hella money for war, but can't feed the poor. <laughs> and that's from Tupac. Man. And, but it was true. You know, that's a that's a that's a quote from Tupac. You got money for war, but can't feed the poor. And that's a fact, man. I love bringing up that point because it's true. 
these devils got millions upon millions upon billions of dollars for a new heli a black hawk helicopter a new cruise missile with nuke you know what i'm saying a new uh humvee or uh, new this new that they got hella money for all of that but yet you have people living on the fucking streets in your society like i said through the spirit you know um uh, that's one of the reasons why Rome fell because there was in there was never ending wars, man. You know, forever wars. These devils, they don't know how to put that 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 uh, that sword down, man. They can't live in peace. They always gotta have war because it's in their heart. They they're the wicked, man. Like the scripture says, how because they enlarge their desires hell. They can't be satisfied. They want all the resources, even if they was to get everything in the world, they still wouldn't be satisfied, man. Because that's just that's still that's just who the fuck they are man you can't please a damn edomite man they can never have enough isaiah chapter 40 verse 6 says he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke so he he don't stop man he saw don't stop he don't he don't know how to put that sword down because he lived by that damn sword so therefore when he lived by that sword he caused nothing but fucking trouble and war it says he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted. So once Yahshua Allah take over, these so this, the whole nation of Edom, and along with you other nations, are gonna be persecuted. But Esau, you're gonna get it the worst. Just like Judah got it the worst, Esau, you're gonna get it the worst, man. You know, that's not excluding all the other tribes. They got it bad too, but the southern kid got it real bad, man. You know? Which we all suffered the same. But Judah got it the worst, man. Cause they the head tribe. And guess what? You Edomites, y'all gonna get it worse. Y'all gonna get it the worst, man. All y'all, all you heathens gonna get it bad, but Esau, you gonna get the worst. <laughs> Cause you the you the devil, man. You gonna get it. We're gonna put a holy foot up in your ass faithfully, man. We ain't gonna miss a heartbeat, man. We it ain't gonna we ain't gonna miss a beat when you get on your ass, Esau. It says, and none hinders. So nobody gives a nobody's gonna give a shit once you damn devils get get it. Once we get our hands on you and start executing that vengeance upon you, nobody's gonna give a shit. Because guess what? You deserve it. Verse 7, it says, the whole earth is at rest and it's quiet, and they break forth into singing. Now I can't, I've never seen that in this in this society. The earth don't break in for dude, people not breaking forth into singing, man. They're not singing out of the joy of their hearts. You know? But that's going to happen once Yasharala takes over. And we put our hands on these devils and stop them from doing the fucking wickedness that they do on the earth, man. Everybody's going to be at rest, man. It says, verse 8 says, Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laying down, no fella has come up against us. So, that's referring to the other nations. The other nations are going to be rejoicing the fact that you Edomites going to be taken out of power, and you're going to be put us put 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 down, so to speak, man. You're going to be tamed like a like a like a dog, man. You know, so we gonna we gonna have we gonna put you devils under subjection. And it's all through this. Spirit and power, how about you? I'm shot, man. We're gonna rule with a rod of iron, and you Edomites gonna get that rod faithfully. We're not gonna miss a beat, man. Because you have put holy hell upon our people, and it's the time of our vengeance, man. So continue to do what you do, man. Continue to murder Jake, Jacob. Because guess what? You're gonna have to pay for it. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 3. I'm gonna get to the point. Well, you know what? I think it's chapter 2. No, it's chapter 3. It's chapter 3. Revelations 3 and uh, 20. No. No, it's actually chapter 2. Yeah, this is the Revelation chapter 2. This this is written in red, so this is Yehoshua speaking. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. It says, But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So let's go to the blue letter real quick. Let's look at that word power.
okay the greek word for power is let's see strong's g 1849 exousia exousia okay the word there is exousia which means power of choice liberty of doing as one pleases and we're going to be able to do what as we please in righteousness so if we want to put an edomite to death because he disobeyed orders or he even looked at you wrong or he even thought some wicked shit in his head because we're going to have spiritual powers just like Yahweh was reading the, uh, the minds of the, the wicked scribes and pharisees we're going to have we're going to have spiritual powers man we can read your mind we didn't know if you were thinking some wickedness we can bop you upside your head man with that rod of iron which iron is a very uh it's a a very powerful um powerful metal you know it says leave or permission physical and mental power Ooh, physical and mental power so we're gonna have physical and mental power mental power makes me think of spiritual powers <laughs> it says the ability or strength with one which is endued which he either possesses or exercises and we're going to have that power you know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Shah we're going to have that power if we continue in faith and in in, in faith and in uh, slack I'm getting tongue tied we continue in sincerity and in faith and believing in the name of Yahweh Bashim al Shah, pushing the word and the doctrine of Yahweh Bashim al Shah 100%. It's truth and it's sincerity. Um, it's keyed on, uh, says, the next one says, the power or of authority, influence, and and uh, and of right. The, the power of rule or government. The power of him whose will and commands must be submitted to. to by others and obey. Ooh, what well, that makes you think of uh, Psalms, Psalms uh, 18, real quick. I'm gonna come back to Revelations 2. Uh, Psalms 18 and 2. No, you know, it's in the 40s. No, wait, what is this? Um. Uh, This this whole this whole psalm is beautiful, man. But I just want to get to a point real quick. This is the book of Psalms, eighteen, and I'm gonna start at verse thirty-nine. It says, "For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle; thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me." And we're gonna have that. We're gonna have that power in that day, man. The Lord is gonna endow us with power. Certain men with power. The scripture says Psalms 110 and 3, people, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Because the Lord is going to give certain men spiritual powers. And they're going to believe. They're going to submit themselves, man. It says verse 39. Oh no, I just read verse 39. Verse 40. Thou has thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies. And then the main neck that we want is you so-called devils you eat so-called edomites man well you edomites you so-called white people thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that i might destroy them that hate me and they hate us so guess what like the scripture says don't i hate those with a perfect hatred king david said that we hate you devils with a perfect hatred man if this was our kingdom we'll be putting a holy foot up your ass psalms 130 39 and 22 it says i hate them with perfect hatred I count them my enemies. So you so-called white people, you really not our friends. You, you you broke that brotherly covenant, man. You are enemies. And if we had the we had the ability, we had the power, man. Just know in our kingdom, when we take over, we're gonna put it, we're gonna put a holy foot in your ass, man. We're not gonna miss a beat, like I said, through the spirit. Because this is guess what? This is what the Lord has said, man. You put you did all the shit. That you did to our motherfucking people And you think the Lord ain't going to allow us to get vengeance upon you The scripture says it's a righteous thing For the Lord to recompense tribulation to them that trouble us So you troubling us And we're going to trouble you man From sun up to sundown. Only rest you're going to get is the fucking Is the Sabbath day man 
Other than that, you're going to get a foot up your ass, man. Because you devils act like y'all so goddamn innocent. Like y'all ain't did nothing. Like the scripture says, Zechariah, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. Fucking hypocrites, man. You want to kill everybody. You want to destroy everything. You want to steal everything. But yet, you want to get away scot-free, man. You ain't did nothing. You ain't got to pay for nothing. You got to suffer. You don't feel like you don't feel like you deserve to to uh, to uh, reap to reap the um so like you don't deserve feel like you deserve to have to pay for the things you have fucking done, man. But you know what? It's the book of Psalms 18 and um 40. It says, "God has given me the next of my enemies that I may destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto Yahweh. But they should answer, but He answered them not. So the Lord ain't gonna help you. The Lord ain't gonna help you." Don't matter if you you want to call on the name of the Lord. The Lord ain't gonna help you. The Lord ain't gonna answer you, man. Because guess what? You done it to us. We gotta do it to you. Recompense, payback. You have tried to get rid of our nation many of times, man. But guess what? We gonna get rid of you. Cause that's what you have you have reaped. So you gonna sow it. Um, verse forty one. It says they cried, but there was none to save them. Even unto the Lord, but He delivered them. He answered them not. Then did I beat them small as to dust before the wind. What? We gonna beat you devils down, man. It says, I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made my, me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. And that's what we looking forward to, man. That's why we believe in Yahweh Shah. That's why we, we go, we risk everything. That's just, this, we do it for the, the accomplishing of the word to the Lord. We want the Lord to perform all his words, man. And by us going out and teaching it, this is bringing it closer and closer, man. The spirit is making things get wrapped up and everything is starting to go faster. Revelation chapter two, because we bringing out these scriptures. We bringing out this kingdom. We bringing down this kingdom with the words of the Bible. Uh, Revelation chapter two, um, verse 26, it says, and he, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will I give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father so let's go back to the word power see if I can see any more um, definitions authority over mankind and that's what we're going to have through the spirit uh, it says specifically the power of judicial decisions so because we're going to be the next judges of this next world you know starting with Yahweh Shai um, it says uh, the, Of authority to manage domestic affairs That's what a judge does um, Continue says A thing subject to authority of rule Jurisdiction One who possesses authority A ruler A human mag magistrate The leading and power, more powerful Among created beings Superior to man Spiritual Pontidae Pont Potentates. It says a sign of hus husband's authority over his wife. The veil which you had. Um, okay, so you get the idea. Ooh, wait. I see some words that caught my attention. Okay, it says in the sense ability. And I hear a strong definition. It says in the in the in the sense ability, privilege, force, compatible. Capacity, I'm still like here. Um, it also says competency, freedom. We're gonna have freedom, mastery, strictly, uh, con concretely, magistrate, superhuman, token of control, delegate influence, authority, jurisdiction. Liberty, power, right, strength. So it's a couple words that I don't know the meaning of that I'm going to look up real quick through the spirit. So let's go. Let's start with competency. If I'm not so for spelling it right, saying it right. Oh, it's competency. Okay. Okay, the word competency says sufficiently. Sufficiency, 
to satisfy the wants of life. Hmm. Meeting together agreement, the quality of being adequately or well qualified physically and intellectually. And that's what we're going to have in the kingdom because the Lord is going to give us those new bodies. And we're going to have meaning sufficient of qualification. We're going to have those, uh, we're going to be able to live actually sufficiently to satisfy the wants of life. Sufficiency of qualification. The quality of adequately or will well and qualified physically and intellectually. So we see what that means. Because we're going to be changed. Our body's going to be changed. This world is going to be changed. Everything's going to be changed. Okay, let's go to a uh, word magistrate. Let's see what these words mean. M A G I S straights. Okay, it says a civil officer in charge of administering laws. Ooh, that's a it's a heavy word. Hey, kahalayim la yahaba shmiyal shah, man. Barakatay yahaba shmiyal shah. Cause this is what we're gonna be. Magistrate. I never looked at this word before. It says also office of or function of a magistrate from old French magistrat from Lent, uh, Latin magistratus, a magistrate public functionary. Originally, um, a chief director, often meaning justice of the peace or other minor officials having criminal jurisdiction. Because like the, like the scripture says, we're gonna be the judges of this next world, man. Started with Yahweh Shah on down, man. You know? Okay. A chief director serve as magistrate. Let's go down. It says a lay a a lay judge or civil authority who administers the law, especially one who conducts a court dealing with minor offenses. So hey man, this is why the elders tell us to look into them words, man. You know? <laughs> Beautiful word. Let's go to the next one. And this is all this is all through the spirit, man. Um potentate. It says uh a potentate. Potentate. It says a ruler, a lord, prince, monarch, person who oppresses possesses independent power or sway and oh, this is a heavy word right here man i like this word i like these words man i went into that mon word monarch i believe in my last lesson or was the lesson before last it basically means the same thing um it says a ruler who also political power might power rule dominion it says a ruler who is unstrangely unstrained by law, unconstrained by law. Powerful. Let's go back up here. Uh, Dominion from potentium. Powerful, powerful, able, compatible, but possible of persons better, preferable, chief principle, strongest, foremost. So these are some very beautiful words. And it goes into that Greek word of power, man. So these are the things we're going to possess. We're going to have that power. And it's going to be from Yahweh Shai, man. So that's why we, you know, we push this word heavy, man. You know, and we continue to push this word. No matter what happens in our life, no matter what Esau try to do, you know, we're going to continue to believe in Yahweh Shai, Lord willing, man. As long as that Lord have the spirit on us, man, we're going to continue to believe in him and believe in his words, man. Because in his words, in his book, it's life, man. Um... Go uh, integrity. Job chapter twenty-seven, verse five. It says, "For, for the Most High forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove my integrity from me." And I love bringing out the scripture because it's a very beautiful scripture. We got to have that mindset, man. Job went through hell. 
body, suffering in the body, suffering, suffering all around, losing, you know, kids, losing everything, man. Going from a man on the, on the top, he went from riches to rags, and then back to riches, you know. And he maintained his integrity. He ain't cursed the Lord. A simple-minded nigga would have cursed the Lord, man. You know, because he, he's a weak. He's weak. So, you know, I know I was all a bit, a little bit all over the place. So, like, you know, it's the spirit. So, hey, Lord willing, man, you brothers are edified with this lesson, man. I'm going to close out by saying, Kaha la yom la, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutation to all the brothers that's doing his work and truth and sincerity. Shalom, Kom Yasha Allah, Wa Abad Baba, Wa Abad Adawam. Shalom.